Hello, my lovelies. About a month ago, when I decided to start a YouTube channel, I introduced myself and described myself as neurodivergent. Today, I would like to expand on that thought. In order to articulate this clearly, I went to WebMD, the University of Washington, and a website called Exceptional Individuals. In a nutshell, they all agree that neurodiversity and neurodivergent refer to people whose brains do not process information in the typical or normal fashion. Neurodivergent is not a mental health diagnosis in and of itself. It is simply a word used to describe people who experience the world differently. People with diagnosable conditions such as ADHD, dyslexia, autism, and others are considered neurodivergent. However, some people do not meet the diagnostic criteria set forth in the DSM-5, yet they meet the definition for neurodivergent due to the way their brains process information. Before we go into my personal experience, I would like to say welcome to Cape Bonnie country. Thanks for stopping by. The terms neurodiversity and neurodivergent was coined by a sociologist with autism named Judy Singer in the 1990s. Since I graduated high school in 1990, there was no such thing as neurodivergent as I was growing up. All we knew is that I marched to the beat of a different drummer. I had great difficulty processing social cues and information. I was highly intelligent. My IQ was tested throughout my schooling and consistently scored between 137 and 152. And I became frustrated to the point of crying very easily. I never fit in with my peers. I was teased and bullied by my classmates. I tried my hardest to fit in, but the more I tried, the more of an outcast I became. Overall, my childhood was very lonely. I was taken to a child psychologist when I was seven. He offered no diagnosis, but suggested I could benefit from psychotherapy and family counseling. He described me as emotionally immature. I remember all of this because there was a can of crayons in the room that I was in. I emptied the crayons out and stuck the can to the wall so I could hear him as he talked to my parents. My father's response to him was, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the way I run my family. Since she's crazy, fix her. Wow, that stung. I think that was the moment my relationship with my father broke. In his eyes, I was the problem. I was broken and I needed fixing. So mom, if you're watching this, I think that's the answer to the question you asked me so many years ago. You asked what happened? You were such an affectionate child, but you got cold when you grew up. Mom, I think that was the beginning of me shutting down the moment my father called me crazy. I did not continue counseling. The child psychologist felt that treating me, just me, and not in conjunction with the family unit would offer little benefit. So I was left to figure it out mostly on my own with my mother standing by to offer support and love. I know that seeing me struggle hurt her, but we lived in a small town with limited resources and she didn't have the tools she needed to help me. So I grew up knowing I was different. I was never good at sports because I am slow. My father would yell at me, hurry up, when I was going at my top speed. My motor neurons just fire slower than most people's. I enjoy video games, but my hand-eye coordination is crap. It took six months of playing Call of Duty Zombies with Doc Dillinger to get my response time to the point where I could survive to round 30. He gets so frustrated with me sometimes, but he sticks with me and notes improvement when he sees them. I was and still am clumsy. I have managed to fall upstairs. I regularly lose my sense of space and stand up into the door handle of the freezer when I'm bending down to reach the bottom shelf of the refrigerator. And I have been known to trip over my own two feet while essentially standing still. 
so I take my time walking up and down stairs, placing each foot carefully and purposefully. Physical tasks have always taken me longer to complete than they should. This has gotten me in trouble at work more than once and even resulted in my termination twice. I simply cannot meet production quotas. I have difficulty interpreting social data. I can never tell when someone is joking or serious. Most jokes just go right over my head. I tend to assume people are serious and become the butt of the joke when it turns out they aren't. I was teased mercilessly for simply not getting it, and that resulted in me bursting into tears out of frustration. Kids can be cruel. By the time I was in high school, I was in trouble. I was tired of being bullied. I went through mental gymnastics to lock my emotions down. I couldn't let them see me cry anymore. So all of this frustration, loneliness, and pain was locked up inside with no way to express it. Mom, if you're watching this, I am so sorry for what you're about to learn. I kept it from you because I did not want to hurt you. When I was 15 years old, I started engaging in self-harm. My arms are covered in scars from self-mutilation. I was not trying to kill myself. I just wanted some way of letting the pain inside out. So cutting my flesh and watching it bleed filled that need. If anyone questioned the cuts, I blamed them on the cats for scratching me, or I said I got tangled in thorns when walking in the woods, or I was simply clumsy. You see, as soon as I cut myself, I felt ashamed. I knew it wasn't healthy. I knew this wasn't right, so I hid them. I didn't want a new label. I was already a Yankee, a crybaby, and an outcast. I didn't want to be labeled crazy, too. Mental health care in the 1980s was not what it is today. Only crazy people went to psychiatrists and counselors. If you couldn't figure it out on your own, then there was something wrong with you. You needed medications to function, or you needed to be committed to a mental institution. Normal people did not seek mental health care. But so many of my generation, Generation X, the latchkey kids, had issues adapting and managing our mental issues that we ended up going to the opposite extreme with our kids. We stopped holding our kids accountable for their actions. We blamed it on ADHD or social anxiety. We took our kids to counseling and shoved pills down their throats to make them all better. We gave birth to the millennials and gave them trophies just for showing up. We failed to make them resilient. And now they are having issues that we never imagined, all because we tried to save them from feeling the same growing pains we did. But maybe we did one thing right. We started to talk about mental health care and the challenges we faced. We started recognizing that each child is unique and one size does not fit all. We started talking about embracing our differences and recognizing that a deficit in one area is often compensated by a strength in another. Today, at 51 years old, I still struggle. I struggle with feelings of inadequacy that I am never good enough. I struggle with time management there is never enough time in a day to do all the things I need and want to do. I struggle with making good choices, sometimes to the point of being so paralyzed with fear of making the wrong one that I end up not taking any action at all. I struggle with depression because even though I made what I thought were good choices in my youth, they turned out to be bad choices. So I am not where I thought I would be by this time of life. And most days, I just wake up feeling lost. I have no close friends because I have difficulty interpreting social cues and cannot seem to form those close connections. I struggle with living, but I am too stubborn to take myself out of the game. So I exist. I put one foot in front of the other and keep moving because that's all I know how to do. 
So what do you struggle with? How do you cope with your anxieties and mental health issues? Please let me know in the comments. I hope at the very least you know you aren't alone. Maybe we can learn effective strategies from each other. If you found my story helpful in any way, please give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to Kate Bonnie Country. Leave a comment. Your comments help me improve my content, so tell me what I did right, what I did wrong, and what you would like to see in the future. Finally, please remember to share this video and my channel with your friends and family. This channel is not possible without your support. Thank you so much for stopping by. I will see you Friday in the workshop.